Hello and welcome to another video and welcome to a mid-month catch-up, check-in, chat about what I've been doing and what I've been reading or rather not been reading. Um, this morning I was supposed to sit down and immediately film this video and then do some work but I decided instead to move my entire office around because basically I've got a few people coming to stay this month and we don't have anywhere for them to stay because, because we don't have a spare room and this room is quite small my desk is quite big so I basically I'll insert a picture here but I basically moved everything around so that we could fit like the, the mattresses from the little day bed so we could actually fit those in the corner so that people can actually stay over that's all by way of saying that I've set this up to actually work but I've just decided to film here today who knows I might just continue filming here um, and I actually managed to fix the clock I say fix it still doesn't work but I put the hands back on because the hands fell off this clock used to be in the background of lots of my videos and people used to always ask me about it I think it was a wedding present from my granddad to my gram along with uh, a bureau which used to appear in my videos as well that's in the other room I haven't got rid of that which does mean this was bought sometime in the 1940s. I can't remember when they got married. Sometime during the Second World War. It doesn't work. I need to find an actual clock fixer. Anyway, you're not here to listen to me talk about fixing clocks. We're going to talk about some books and some other things. So this month has been incredibly busy. It's, I'm actually having to look at the date. It's the 14th of September and I've read one thing from my 10 book TBR. It has been an incredibly busy couple of weeks so far. I had to go to a uh, library in Manchester, the University of Manchester Library, to the archive there to look at some research stuff and luckily I was able to stay with a friend who lives near Manchester. He very kindly put us up and so we managed to have like a few days of me being in the archive. A little bit of a day out in Manchester when I managed to finish some of the stuff early and then we went camping. Uh, Mary and I we went camping for three days. So I spent a long time in archives and then we went camping. I'm going to insert a bit of footage here from our time away just so you can see what we got up to and then I'll talk a little bit about it. <laughs> enjoy camping sometimes and for very specific reasons I really enjoy getting up in the morning and being immediately outside and having to actually have your breakfast outside cook your breakfast outside <laughs> have a cup of coffee outside it's really nice just being able to sit there listen to the birds um, especially if it's a nice quiet campsite I really like that and I really like cooking outside in the evening getting your little camping stove out cooking a little meal I say I enjoy cooking. Mary cooks. <laughs> She's very good at it. 
and she, she's very good at choosing meals that only take one pot which is fantastic but I enjoy eating outside shall we say I enjoy that bit of it everything else I pretty much hate about camping like no that's not true actually I really like how cheap it was so we went away for four days and it was 58 pounds for the campsite the campsite was really basic and you had to pay for hot water now I've been to campsites before where you had to pay for the showers but you can at least do your washing up with the hot water no no we had to pay for you had to pay for the hot water to wash up so we didn't we just boiled the kettle because I figured it was cheaper to use our little canister of gas than actually pay the money to get the hot water anyway um everything got wet because the tent we were using is one that I inherited from my dad and um, he gave us one a few years ago which was absolutely massive and it's been family size tent and we got rid of that because it was too big and we were using a friend's tent but then we decided okay we need to actually get our own tent but then when my dad passed away we inherited all of his camping stuff so um, a nice big massive camping lantern which was wonderful and a few other bits and pieces but also this tent turns out this tent is rubbish dad what were you thinking this is a terrible tent everything got wet because it didn't have an enclosed inner I mean the bedroom was but it was just it just had like a little coat on the top with like open stuff it was just rubbish I can't describe it but it's terrible so I'm gonna I feel bad donating it to like a charity shop because it's a terrible tent but also it's terrible I don't want to keep it I don't want to throw it away because it feels so wasteful but what were you thinking dad honestly it's a terrible tent right so we're never camping again I just um I just hate sleeping on the floor it's so uncomfortable <laughs> and I really hate when the campsite filled up and it was just full of people I'm not saying I don't like people but I'm just coming across as really grumpy now aren't I I like people I just like it when I can hear sheep and birds and not people playing music or talking loudly or I mean who stays up till 11 p.m on a campsite I mean seriously you go to bed when it gets dark anyway so that's what that's what we did um I've also been doing a little bit of sewing so this this top that I'm currently wearing used to be a favorite dress of mine but it never quite fit properly around the hips so what I did instead I'm gonna have to move back to give you a little show um is I turned it into a t-shirt so well not a t-shirt I turned it into a top so it's now this length and it has these little like bits where I had to cut some pockets out because the pockets were down somewhere down here um I ooh, nearly fell off my chair I never knew how to sew. I only recently borrowed a sewing machine from a friend and started learning and it's really quite stressful because I don't know what I'm doing. But I I just cut this off and then I had to cut the pockets out because they were too big and then I turned it into a top. I'm not sure I'll ever wear it out of the house because it does look a bit, it's a bit shabby. I quite like it though, I'm quite happy with it. Um, so that's pretty much all I've been doing recently and working. So I'm on a break at the moment from work and I've got to go back the thing about going to the archives they were great but I have thousands thousands of images to sort through and it's just taking so long and it's just exhausting so that's what's been going on in my life pretty much just driving around going camping going for afternoon tea as you, as you saw going um to archives and now moving furniture around which I think is just procrastinating but making the space comfortable for people to come and stay. So I have read a little bit. Not all of it is on my TBR. So I'm going to talk to you about stuff that I have read and stuff that I am currently reading. And so the first thing that I finished in September is something that was not on my TBR, but it is an absolutely tiny, 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 tiny poetry book. Um, so this is A Plastic Tubed Little Bird by Wendy Allen. If you are a fan of poetry, I would recommend that you get hold of this. It is a poetry pamphlet, so it's absolutely tiny. And it's um, Wendy's first poetry pamphlet. <laughs> and it is, hang on, let me check how many pages it is, just so you know. Let's get past the acknowledgements. 27 pages long. Um, what I will say about this poetry collection is that I'm not going to read any of it out because I might get banned by YouTube. If you're interested in poems that are about sex, if you're interested in poems that are about menstruation, if you're interested in poems that are about, well, not about a moon cup, but it does get mentioned. I think it's the first poem I've ever read that mentions tampons um, or a collection of poems. This is absolutely brilliant. I think Wendy Allen is a brilliant poet and I cannot wait to read what she writes next. Um, she's just absolutely phenomenal. Um, these poems are very visceral, very, authentic I want to say they're very honest 
they're very um, sharp and brutal and I think that's probably the best way that I can describe it I absolutely loved this collection so I read it um three or four times and I really really enjoyed it the second thing I read was actually from my TBR for September and that is Christopher and His Kind by Christopher Isherwood this is a memoir written in the third person mostly uh, by Christopher Isherwood about his time in Berlin well it starts in Berlin and then we quickly go around the rest of the entire world but it starts in November 1929 and just covers a 10-year period and it's a really interesting period because it obviously coincides with the rise of the Nazis and with Christopher Isherwood leaving the leaving Berlin um leaving Europe really and starting to kind of think about where he wants to go in the world he doesn't really feel like he belongs in England he loved Berlin but doesn't really feel like he belongs there anymore it's really interesting I will say that if you've not read Christopher Isherwood's um, novels such as so Good Goodbye to Berlin it's obviously the one that I think you should definitely read Mr Norris Changes Trains is another one and I think Lines and Shadows as well is probably one that you should read so those are the main ones I would recommend that you read those before you read this I think you can read this without having read those and you'll still get something from it. But having not read any of those books and reading this, I must say that I think I would have benefited from actually reading them. So what he does in this is that he references those books and references huge passages from those books and talks about them. But I didn't realise that so many of the fictional books that he wrote, so many of the characters are based on real people. And what you actually get in this book is him saying, oh, this person was based on this person, but this is how they're different from the character that I wrote in the book. And I think if you don't know those characters, then it's still interesting, but I feel like I would have got a lot more. And I think that I need to then read those books and then go back to this so I can see the reality of what it was. There were times in this book that it was a little bit meandering and a little, I was a bit like, get to the point, Christopher, what are you talking about? Um, and a little too detailed at some points about kind of what people look like and how he wrote them into stories and that for me was a little bit disappointed I want to say I kind of expected it to be a little bit I expected it to be something different shall we say but overall I really enjoyed it it's really really fascinating especially um talking about his relationships one of my favorite bits was him talking about Ian Forster Ian Forster's in this quite a lot and talking about their friendship um, talking about Ian Forster's relationships but the really interesting bit for me was him talking about when he first read Morris and discussing with Forster what they thought of the ending so what either of them thought the ending should be and where Christopher Isherwood felt Morris kind of lay in the uh, the landscape of Forster novels which one was better and why and it's just really really interesting his reflections on Morris I would recommend that you read this it is um quite a chunky book I am obsessed with page numbers aren't I it's 350 pages but I think probably read his other books first and then and then go to this would be my recommendation so that is literally the only two things that I have read so far in September um the month is just going to get busier so I'm going to have some coffee while I contemplate why I picked a TBR of 10 books the things that I am currently reading. I'm currently reading two poetry books, which I am getting through quite quickly. One is The War Poems of Siegfried Sassoon. I have previously read the entire works of Siegfried Sassoon. So this is just a book on my shelf, which I hadn't read in its entirety, but I have read most of these poems already. There was one really interesting footnote on one of the poems because Sassoon writes, or rather this edition has some of Sassoon's own notes that he wrote to some of the poems to kind of explain them a bit more and talking about useful for my PhD there is a footnote in here which is incredibly useful which I didn't realise was there where he talks about Wilfred Owen and so that's been really useful so I'm just kind of going through and I know quite a lot of the poems already so I, I really only need to read it once the next thing I'm reading is another poetry book this was not on my TBR for September but I did say I was going to read them if you haven't watched my video about the forward prices I will put a link to that below the forward prizes are a huge poetry prize in the UK. They have awards for best first collection, best collection, best uh, single poem and best single poem performed. 
which is a new category this year. In that video, I kind of broke down what all those different categories are and talked through the two categories of single poems because I was able to read those or watch those and reflect on which ones I liked. I'm now trying to read through all of the other books and it's going to take me a very long time because my library doesn't seem to have most of them. And even though it, they are within the system, quite a lot of them, except for there was one that hadn't yet been published, but, but they've now got all of them. And I put holes on all of them but they just don't appear to be moving. No one seems to have got them off the shelf from these libraries that are very far away. Um, I was tempted to go drive to the libraries, but it would take me about an hour, so I'm not gonna do that. But I'm hoping that they will eventually, at some point, arrive and I can read them. But I did manage to get hold of this one from the university libraries. So this one is Cane, Corn and Gully by Safaya Kamaria Kinshasa. This I've read about half of, and I read it whilst we were on holiday. And I've got to say that the half that I read, I found it very hard to get whatever message the poet was trying to tell me. I didn't really get a lot of where the poems were going and the choice of language was very beautiful and very interesting but I couldn't really get a sense of what that message was, what the poems were trying to tell me and that made it very hard for me to kind of read and connect. So I'm interested in the second half, it kind of moves into a second half of the collection, I'm interested in how that develops and I will have to go back several times and read it because you can't read poetry just once you have to read it multiple times I think to really get a sense of it so I'm going to go back and read this I'd be really interested to know if you've read this and what you thought of it but so far I'm not I try not to read the descriptions in the front of poetry books about what the collection is really focused on what it's about because I like to try and experience that for myself but I think I might have to because I don't quite I'm not connecting with it so the other two things that I am reading, slightly more so successfully, is I'm reading Small Country by Gail Faye, which is translated by Sarah Ardizoni. And this is a book which is set in Burundi in 1992. When I mentioned this in my TBR video, loads of people said that they'd read this and that they absolutely loved this. So I'm, I was really looking forward to it. I wanted to jump onto it as, as soon as I could. I'm reading on page 18, but it's beautiful. There's something about the writing that's quite um it, it doesn't it doesn't feel real like the dialogue feels a bit stilted it feels a bit unrealistic that I'm I'm struggling to connect with but outside of the dialogue it's working really well for me so I'm only 18 pages in so I can't judge it yet but it is incredibly beautiful and I'm really looking forward to continuing this so the last book slightly less successfully because not enjoying this at the moment, but I am listening to the audiobook of No One Around Here Reads Tolstoy, Memoirs of a Working Class Reader by Mark Hodkinson. I was going to listen to this on the drive up north, but we decided to listen to a podcast series instead. But my local library had an audiobook copy, so I started listening to that. It's narrated by the author and he does it quite well. The reason I'm not enjoying this at the moment is that so this is about a man who is from a working class neighbourhood and... As the title would suggest, he is an avid reader, collects books, has over 3,000 books, but the people around him don't read books and the people around him don't really appreciate books in the way that he does. And I don't know where else we're going to go from that, but at the moment it feels very much like he's saying, I'm not like other working class people because I read books, which is, I've got to say, rubbing me up the wrong way because as someone from a working class family who are all avid readers, that's not been my experience of working class communities that people don't like books. Um, and also he seems to, I'm sure that this will change because I think this might be the point of the book. And you can correct me if I've, if I've understood this wrong, but I think, I think this might change. But at the moment, the way that it's kind of coming across is that he is putting a very high value on the physical book, on the act, on owning books rather than the experiences that you get from reading those books. And I'm assuming that that will change. And therefore I might enjoy it a bit more, but at the moment. Okay, so my plans are to continue reading those poetry books, which at least one of which is on my TBR, and to finish Small Country, which is quite a small book, so I think I should do it. I do have a very busy month ahead um, with work. I am starting a new job as well, but I don't think I'm actually going to be doing any shifts until the last week of September. So. I can't remember which video I mentioned this in. I think it might have been my PhD video. I don't know, but I definitely mentioned it recently. But if you missed it, I recently got a job as a casual library assistant, which um, 
given I gave up being a librarian and was talking about whether I should change my channel name, we can hold off on that because I'm going to be working in a library again, which is really nice. But it's just going to be a casual job. So whenever people are off sick or off on holiday, then I can swoop in and assist. I'm trying to make that sound dramatic. I'm literally going to be working in a library, but I'm very excited about it. So I will be starting that at some point in September. So that is a little catch up of everything that I have been up to so far in September. Everything that I have read which is not very much, and some things that I plan to read. And all of the other books on my TBR are over there looking at me rather shadily. I did, when I was in Manchester, buy some books. Now I know what you're going to say. Okay, okay, okay. I can really preempt it. Um, Jen, you're not supposed to be buying books because you're supposed to be reading through your TBR this year. However, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but next year, 2024, just in case you forgot what next year was. But next year, I have a plan. I have a cunning plan. No, I don't. I, I just have a plan of a project that I'm going to do, that I'm going to read. And it's not going to be a big, I mean, it's going to be big in the sense that it's going to take the entire year, but it's, um, it's not a particular author. It's just a thing that I'm doing. I'm not going to tell anyone what it is just yet. I might make you guess at the start of the year, but I bought three, but I'm looking at them because they're up there, also looking at me, trying to make me feel guilty because I bought them. There are three books that I purchased in Queerlet, which is a LGBTQ bookstore in Manchester. I'm going to be talking about them in my next video, but two of them are for next year, so I can, they're for the project. So I technically only bought one book that I have to read this year, before the end of the year. I have some regret about my life choices. Okay, so that's all. Thank you so much for watching. Um, do let me know all of your thoughts in the comments below about any of the books that I've mentioned in this video. And I will see you very soon in another video. Thank you so much for watching.